Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. Yeah, that's, that's about right, it's about half of what we had in there. And then I'll bring it on round and I will put the rest into this one down here. We'll just check the production. Right, well that's actually full, that one is, the tomatoes one, and this one here is a fraction off of full as well, so it's not like we've got a shortage of water anywhere, so we're not going to have to worry about them for quite a while. We've now got water in both of the sheep pens. I'll not worry about putting food into the second sheep pen, we'll do that eventually, but we're not going to worry about it just yet. Uh, you can start filling up, and we'll shut that tractor off. Nothing else now that we need to do until tomorrow. So we'll go and get some sleep. Um, what we could do, actually, is rather than worrying about buying up another one, instead of worrying about, like, trying to get all of the extra sheep in there, because the sheep aren't actually that much, are they? No, they're not. These right here, we can buy them in at eight months old. They're 500 apiece. Which means that we can start producing our sheep down there immediately. And they can immediately start producing wool as well. So we have about 3,000 litres for hay. So I'm going to just have a couple of bales out of here. Chuck that on down there. I need to take another bale over to the group at the top here anyway. We've got 6,600. So I'll drop that one in there. We've got 3,000 litres of food. It's 550 in that bale. That bale there is 600 litres. Chuck you down over there. And that one... What I say it was 3,000 litres in the sheep pen, yeah, which means I'm going to need five bales in total. I suppose I could load them onto the Mahindra and take them down, but that's, that seems like a lot of effort, really. That's bale number four and bale number five. Right. Chuck that down over there like that, and then I'll grab you. And we can slide them along like that. Just kind of bulldoze them straight into the pen. Put you in. There. Yeah, I love doing this. You just pick them up and chuck them. Right in there. It's really awesome that we can actually use small bales like this. So I've got 3,000 litres in there. That hay bale there has got 195 litres left in it. So we've now got food in here. We've got water. We have no animals, but we can go and buy some. What I'm hoping is... Right, if I take those... This here... Back. Uh, these are zero months. So, oh, the gestation is five months. That's when we'd start getting new lambs. So I'm going to go with this one right here. That's 1,600, uh, 2, 3... 4,000 there, that's 8 sheep. Uh, one gestation period later and we'll fill this pen up completely. We do have to wait for the lambs to grow, but this is going to give us just a couple thousand left over that we can then do stuff with. So we'll buy, buy those few in there. It's not loads, we've got 8 animals in there. Once they have produced, that pen will be full. So at the moment, health is on zero, productivity is on zero. It takes a minute for that to build up. This one over here, everything is looking good and the reproduction is coming up. So there'll only be three new lambs in there and then that will fill up. So to start with, we can have our 30 sheep and they can produce wool and then we'll see about getting bigger pens later on. I may get a mod. This is something that you can answer actually because it'll be a long time before we're ready to do that. Should I get a mod that will increase the capacity of the animal pens? So if we have a look in here for the animals, I go to the sheep. This one right here is kind of like the shed that I would want to get. 97,000, but it only has 65 sheep. I would say, looking at it, a shed like this, you'd be able to easily put 100 sheep in that shed. 
possibly 150. 150 might be a bit of a squeeze, but 100 sheep would be no problem at all in that shed. It's not that big a shed, to be honest, but 100 sheep would seem about right. So I don't want to overdo it. I'm not getting a small shed that will take 10,000 sheep or anything like that. But if we were to put 100 sheep... Music's playing again. We know the music just kind of echoes across the hills. We don't know where it comes from. Um, if I was to get a shed that could be modified, well, a modified shed that had 100 capacity, do you think that would be better or should we stick with the, the one that limits it to 65 sheep? Let me know in the comment section and then I will act on that later. So there's one question for all of you. Now I'm going to go and get a little bit of shut eye. I think we've earned it today. I really do. A little bit of a, sh uh, a schnooze. Look at the countryside. I got it. I got time on ten times speed at the moment. I love the kind of like the color of everything early in the morning in the winter. Because I mean, it really is like this. If you've ever gotten up nice and early in the winter, we well, don't even need to get up that early in the winter, or at least not where I live. Um, you know, it's if if you're up with the the sun coming up. You get these kinds of colours bathing the countryside. It's, it, it's absolutely amazing. Although our trees don't tend to go quite like that. This, there's certain types of trees that do go like that. Our trees tend to, like, half are green leaves and the other half the leaves are on the floor. Um, it, we don't tend to get all the leaves going different, like, oranges and reds and so on like that. And then all falling off. That, um, but there are a couple that do. Like, the beech hedges will do that. Um, but generally the leaves just kind of wilt into brown and, and fall off. So we don't necessarily have that bit, but the uh, kind of the goldeny colour that we've got all over the place. That some morning, I'm not, not every morning, definitely not every morning. I'm not trying to claim that or anything. But some mornings it really does feel like that. Like it, the whole, it, it looks this amazing. It, it really does. Our animals are now at 100% health. We have 35 litres of wool. We are really rolling in it now, aren't we? So if we go and have a look in here, right there, 100%. Reproduction is on 20% because we've gone forward one month. Um, these, the reproduction is at 60%. We've got 544 litres of wool. I think the wool pallets are 1,000 litres per pallet. So when the pallet reaches 1,000 litres, then it'll start on another one. And food is doing just fine, and we've got food down there. There isn't really a lot else for us to do. Not in this month. We haven't got the money now to be going, starting on our um, arable, enter well, our root crop enterprise. I mean, we could just go and take a look, see what we've got. We've got some cultivating jobs, which I don't want to do. We've got baling jobs. It's November. I'm not doing baling jobs. That's not really in keeping with the season. Uh, Fertiliser, possibly in November, but unlikely. Um, yes, you, well, actually, soybeans and corn, yeah, I don't know about sugar, I think sugar beet is quite, uh, late harvesting. That would get us 6,000 plus whatever we get for the sugar beet as well. It's a small field, that one is, field 21. It's a soybean harvest, and that's a corn harvest. It would be something different to do, wouldn't it? I could set the plowing job going there. At least the equipment for a thousand euros, so we would get five and a half thousand. Uh, if we said fifteen hundred, there's still four thousand profit. So that's field sixteen. Let's have a look. Field sixteen. Where is that? Uh, let's go over here to the crop type bit. Field sixteen. That's that one all the way over there. I mean, we've only got to drive over there, put the plow going, and then forget about it. So what is the harvest? Well, field twenty-one we know is a harvest one. And the yields are usually pretty good. Now, November, what is the sugar beet price? 160, 131 from the supermarket. Although, I mean, we could send it off to Felsbrunn once we've harvested a bit. Field 21 is that little field there. It's a long time doing a job like that, isn't it? I don't think we will. I don't think we'll do that one. Field 11 is soybeans, and field 23 is corn. Field 11 there, and field 23, that's the one all the way up over there. 
Hmm. I suppose we could do those two jobs. We do a ploughing job. We could do those two jobs. Give us something to do over the winter months. Or, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that, actually. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We've got one month gone by over there. We'll keep an eye on our sheep. And then, other than that, we're going to fast forward time. I always get bogged down with taking too long over the different tasks and that. And not progressing through the seasons. And we've got seasons here. So I'm going to move time forward. We're, we're not going to do very much in the way of contracting. Um, I'm not going to get hung up doing those. Because that would take another. That would be another two or three episodes. To work through those harvest jobs. Get everything there. Get them going. Have it happen. All the rest of it. It would take too long. It's, it's, it's just going to take too long. Wow. Eight o'clock in the morning. Middle of November, well, 2nd of November, but this is so cool. This is definitely cool. And we'll just have a quick, I mean, we don't need to run up here to check our sheep. So water and food is absolutely fine up there. And water and food is absolutely fine up there. And I'm not worried about the greenhouses, the prices for stuff from the greenhouses. Uh, it was a couple of months ago that I sold things. February is what I wanted to get to, and we're in November. We might leave it until February. We could leave it until February. To our path over here. This is this this is gorgeous. Let's see what happens in another month. We'll see what happens for November, for December now. So we're going to go and sleep for an for an entire day. All the way through. So we're now we're now in the depths of winter for December. I don't think the game itself actually gives you snow in the autumn, but I believe. See, we have got snow due today. It's, it's it's dark now, isn't it? Look at this. It's dark now. There's a bit of a a wind. I can hear the wind coming through as well. I've got my path that goes over here towards the tractor, but I'm thinking I should have a path also from here straight up to the sheep. I mean, any shepherd would walk straight to the sheep. And we're shepherds now. We need to do this. Landscaping, painting. We need to just put in there, that one, and we need a path that goes... up to the sheep just like that while we're here do we go and build this one yet let's do it let's do it yeah right so I've got a track that will run right the way across the middle of our field that we had there but that's just the way it is so now we want to go slowly with this bit so that we can make a decent track without making too many mistakes with it. I bring that one back up there like that. Take a bit off of this corner here. A bit more off of there. It's always going to be a bit muddier when you've, you've kind of got this bit where you're going around the corner. And then... This one here, because I don't want to be driving across the entire field. So that's going to come up and around there like that. And the other one. Will come up there like that. So that's also going to muddy that out a little bit in the middle of that bit of track right there. Like that. And then this one here. Drives back around that way. Like that. Yeah. Right, there's our track over the greenhouses. I can't do anything about the level of the ground in there, unfortunately, but I think that's going to be all right. Uh, the light is slowly starting to creep through here. How are we for water? 1,280 here. And 140 in there. So we're doing all right with that. The wool over here, we are now at 500 and... 63 k 830 litres of wool on our first pallet. We've got 1,600 euros left. We're in December. So I was 
thinking that we would mostly just sort of sleep through all of it. We've got the sheep. We're looking after those. Um, we don't really have a lot of other work that we can do right now. So we will continue to sleep through the months. There was snow. I forgot to check the forecast to see how much snow we're going to get. But it looks like quite a bit. So it may be completely white across the ground in a minute. Let us see when we get... To... There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that is gorgeous. What a view! We've got we, we to have a little bit of a play in the snow. So we do have some expenses coming through each day. So we're slowly ticking down the money, but we'll be able to sell some stuff soon. This, 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 what, what a view this is. This, this is amazing. This is winter in the Alps, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like we ought to do some work here now. You hear that? You hear the wind in the background. And you can hear your feet crunching in snow. That is so cool. Very, very, very cool that is. I love it. Uh, 986 litres of wool from that one pallet right there. Let's have a look and see what the forecast is. So it's minus 7 right there. When it gets to 1, 2 degrees, unfortunately, the game at the moment, it melts everything. If it goes above freezing, which is slightly weird because that's not how things are in real life but that's how the game is people are already building um and making mods called geo uh, geos which a geo basically sets the weather to whatever you want for a region so people are making geos already that alter the weather details the weather patterns to fit what they think would be more accurate. So there are some that are making them where the snow doesn't melt at uh, the set temperature. Or just having the, the temperature uh, lower so that it lasts longer. Um, and you have snow on the ground for the whole of winter. Things like that. Um, there's, there's people doing a lot of work on it. Now, one thing that I haven't actually tried yet is digging up snow. I don't even know if you can do it. I do like that we've got a nice layer of snow on the roof of the shed. Something else that I want to try is to see what it's like driving fast in the snow. Okay. Right, that I could very easily have just slid straight down into that trailer. So apparently driving fast on a hill in the snow is dangerous. Who'd have thunk it? Seriously, who'd, who'd have thought such a thing? Driving fast in the snow could actually be a dangerous thing to do. Let's see. No, 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 no. <laughs> I had no chance. I was trying to go backwards. I was, I was trying to stop. Can I even get up the hill? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. It's, it's proper spinning. I wonder if it's actually going to stop spin. This, this is... Stop! No! Stop! Stop! I'm too pretty! I'm too pretty! <laughs> stop! Please! Stop! Stop! No! Stop! Stop! This is, I, I, I know that in real life, if you just have your foot on the brakes, it's not going to do anything. You, you kind of need to, to, to drive and grip. But driving and gripping doesn't seem to be an option in here. I think I've just got to put my foot on the brakes and stop. What you've got to do in real life, if you want to be able to sort of save yourself... I ain't going anywhere, am I? <laughs> oh! If you want to be able to save yourself when you're sliding down the hill in real life, you've got to actually drive accelerate so that your wheels grip and then turn um but that level of physics is not built into the game so all you can do is just kind of like clamp the brakes on <laughs> we can apparently get a little bit of speed we can slide all the way down the hill whilst trying to stop this <laughs> this is genuinely amazing i absolutely love it i didn't realize that the snow had such an impact i haven't really done anything in the snow before it would be really useful if you could actually get up the hill here i'm just drifting across the side of it now 
Oh, this is fantastic. I'm still got I'm going sideways more than I'm going forwards. Go forwards. We're really struggling with this. Let's let's get on up here in front of the sheep where there isn't actually any there we go. Now we can grip. I think it's probably in our best interest if we put this thing away in a shed and leave it alone. Not sure I can be trusted with something like this. Not in these conditions. I do not have the level of adult responsibility to be trusted with a machine like this. One more little detail to observe. There's snow all over the wheels. How cool is that? Literally cool. This is so cool. This, this, this is just awesome. This, this is amazing. And what can we pick up with that? Because I've got this one. And I've got the pallet forks. We're going to use the pallet forks to move the pallets of wool from the sheep. I know I'm not using them to go and move those, but that's just because we get too many of them. Um, but the pallets of wool from the sheep, we'll move them from in front of the sheep. And we'll put them somewhere else to store them for a bit, and then we will sell them. Because I think that there is certain times of the year when the wool is priced its highest. So we will store the wool for the entire year. Wool here, May. We store the wool until May. And then after that, uh, yeah, we sell it in May. Uh, ideally, though, we want to be able to buy the thingy before May so that we can turn it into fabric instead. Because you get a, a far, far higher price for doing that. What we don't have is a bucket. Let's have a look at what we do have. We've got front loader tools right here. We have that one. It does actually pick up snow. The Flegel Ruby. This tool can cut sugar beet to feed them. So this one does actually pick up snow, which means that we can use it like a standard bucket. So let's do that then. We'll unhitch that one there. Drive on up round here. Slightly disappointing. Because in the Seasons mod in FS17, you had the snow on the ground, but it also left tractor marks in the snow. You actually left indentations in the snow. It was a proper layer, and indentations were left in the snow. It doesn't do that in this new game. I have got the snow on the wheels, so I am pleased about that. I do like that. That's a, a really good positive that we've got going on there. Um, but slight, it is slightly disappointing to me that I don't have tractor marks, like the, the, the wheel marks being left behind in the snow. That, that is a little bit of a disappointment. Now, let's see if we can pick any snow up. So, I'm going to put you on there. You've already got a little bit of snow, but I don't know if that's because of other things I was doing. Let's... Take it on round here. Out of the way, crows. And it does. So although it doesn't leave tractor marks in the snow, we do pick up a pile of the stuff like that. Oh! Apparently a bucket of snow is heavy. Who'd have thunk it? Right, well, I'm I'm not going to try and turn around with this. I'm just going to tip it out in a heap right there. And fan schmastic, it does actually leave it as a heap. So we will be able to find out once we start, once the snow starts to melt a little bit later on in the season. Um, does the great big heap just disappear as well? Let's have a wait on this. It might make life a little bit easier for us. We'll continue our snow ploughing extravaganza. Up through here. So I just want to go into here and this one. We are currently minus three. It'll be minus one. It goes to zero and then one degree. So when we get to about 12 o'clock, it's going to have warmed up enough that in theory the snow will melt all across the countryside. And then there won't be any left. So what we will do... Look there, see that weight on the back? 
I love that. I love that. That's something that I've always loved, though. Uh, it just seems to be a little bit more pronounced this time round. The weight, the counterweight on the back really making a difference to the... Um, it, like, really properly making a difference to the weight of the tractor and the performance of the tractor. I mean, I don't know. I, I could be slightly wrong on that. Um, I didn't do all that much front loader work, so I'm not fully aware of how significant the having the weight on the back would have been. It's definitely working like this. Probably wouldn't want to be going downhill to do this. You'd want to be approaching the pile from the lower side to try and keep it as safe as possible. But, well, I'm living life dangerously today. So I'll go and get one more bucket full and we'll stick it on that heap. And then we will fast forward time a little bit. Just so that we can... Let's try. Pick up. There we go. Right, I've picked up all of the snow that I can. We'll reverse down the hill for this. And then we'll fast forward time a bit and we'll see what happens with the pile of snow. In the Seasons mod in FS19, one thing that would happen if you had a pile of snow, because the snow was like an extra layer across the map, I mean this is technically an extra layer across the map, but because the snow sort of worked as an extra layer and um, across the map, if the snow was thick, it would be in like two or three different layers, and so you'd have a layer melt. Once the temperature got up, it would start to melt. You'd have one layer of snow melt, and then a little bit later, another layer. So if you had a great big heap like this, your heap of snow could last until May. So no marks being left in the snow. Does it squash it down if I drive right up onto the top? Doesn't squash it down. That is about as good good a snowman as we are going to get but we have got a snowman ladies and gentlemen so i feel that we at least need to give ourselves a little bit of congratulations for that achievement i'll just back up a little bit i lower this one down here we don't need to do a great deal we know that according to the forecast it's going to warm up a bit it's going to snow again this afternoon but it's about 12 o'clock, between 11 and 12, that the temperature is going to change. So we're going to fast forward now, and we're going to see. So there we go, I've gone all the way up to 360 times. So 11 o'clock is going to hit zero, and by 12, it will have gone above zero. So in theory, the snow will start to melt across the countryside. At least I think that's what normally happens. So it gets above... Um, the temperature, it like it all ends up disappearing. It doesn't seem to be doing that. Well, at the moment at least. One o'clock. Let me just slow that down a minute. We are... It's at two degrees. Maybe two degrees isn't enough to... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.